Hey everybody, I'm Shaq. And I'm Chris. And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let Me Tell You. Where we explore ways to navigate life's transitions and challenges and find motivation to make the necessary changes to live a healthy and full life. All right, you guys, time for the housekeeping statement. (laughs) On this podcast, you will hear from social workers, counselors, therapists, and sex coaches. But please remember remember. that we are not your social worker, counselor, therapist, and sex coach. These conversations are for informational purposes only. Please refer to your medical or mental health professional for advice and diagnosis of your specific problem. Okay, guys. Let's get into it. Yep. So what are we talking about today, Chris? Today we're talking about boundaries. Boundaries. So the reason why we decided to talk about this topic, because one of our listeners, listen, one of our listeners, because one of our listeners sent a question in regarding how to set boundaries between family members and dealing with toxic people. So before we get into all that specific specifics, we want to give an overview of what boundaries are. Really are. So let me tell you, we're going to begin with what are boundaries? What are they? And why are they needed? Exactly. So what are them boundaries, Chris? What are, <laughs> <laughs> what are my boundaries? Yeah, what are boundaries in general? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> boundaries are, Da-da-da-doom. boom, 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 e, they are, what, what is the definition? <laughs> what am I looking at? Is it, is that did it? you put it up there? I thought you wrote it. I did not. I, I thought said, you wrote no, it. Remember we were saying we were going to go through who who's were we going to who whose definition we were going to use. But then you but then you put it up there. I did it because you said you wanted to go with the other lady. No, I That's didn't. It. You did. You no, said, I did you not. Did so you said the bad is so now you up here lying. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> okay, hold up, you guys. I don't know if we even still have this in the your thing. <laughs> What are boundaries? All right. Boundaries are limits, essentially. Yeah. It's you telling another person or another group of people what your limits are, and then you enforcing those limits. And it's also a form of self-care. You can look at boundaries as a form of self-care. Right. It helps you to create clear guidelines, clear limitations, letting people know exactly where or how far to go with relationships and finances and toxic people or work environments. Right. And the official definition that I did write down is the limits we set with ourselves around what we will or will not tolerate. Boom. It is what it is, people. That's what it is. Boundaries are something that we can develop over time. It's not like you just wake up one day and you have boundaries. And boundaries (laughs) are created um, on different uh, during different life stages. So, as a ch- as a child or or a, a toddler, you create boundaries with things that may harm them. Don't touch the hot stove. Right. Don't put that rock in your mouth. Don't put that rock in your mouth. You don't know where that rock been. <laughs> as teenagers, is be home by a certain time. Don't go through my things without asking. Right. As young adults, is make sure you spend your money wisely. Make sure you cover up. If you want to be going into places and doing things that you you grown enough to do, you want to make sure you have some added protection. Right. And then for those of us who are over 40 and 50 and 60, we may just have boundaries with how we spend our money, whom we let in our home, what time, what, what's the latest you can call, what's the earliest you can stop by. And so that in different life stages, we see that there are different boundaries during those stages. Right. Whose food you're going to eat during the potluck. That's a boundary. <laughs> that is a real boundary because I'm like, I don't eat nobody else's cooking. I know a lot of folks like that. They're like, mm-mm. mm-mm. That's Who a made boundary this? For me. Oh, no. oh. They got all them animals. No, I'm good. I am good. So, yes, boundaries change throughout your throughout your life. Yeah. Um, and some things you might care about at 20 years old, you may find like at 35, it don't really matter. So right. it, it's no longer a boundary. Nope. And that's okay. That is okay. So what are some signs that you might need a boundary or need to start setting boundaries? Well, what's one of your signs? One of my signs is, well, one of my signs. Okay. This is is something I know. (laughs) 
if I'm like continuously helping other people, I'm continuously volunteering for things that not necessarily was part of my job or my responsibility. And it's cool. Let, let me just go back up. All right. So sometimes I might over volunteer myself, not because someone's asking me to do it, just because oh, I see a need. I want to help. Right. So I go and do it. I do that thing, even though this thing might be somebody else's job, mm -hmm. but I'll go ahead and do that thing. And I'll keep doing that thing until I start. Then I start thinking like, wait a minute. How come <laughs> I'm the only one doing this? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. How come nobody's showing me no appreciation? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this every day on day. Nobody's saying nothing to me. I'm getting zero percent in return of doing what I what I'm mm -hmm. doing. I'm offering all my mm -hmm. goodness, and I'm getting no ROIs. goodness back. Mm -hmm. And I start getting bitter. I start getting resentful, and I start getting pissed. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that this is something, or whatever area that is, that's making me feel that resentment. Yeah, I need to set a boundary in that area because yes. obviously it's causing me some mental distress yes absolutely i think for me when i know that i need to not maybe set a boundary but stick to my boundaries mm. is when i'm yelling didn't i say yeah i should only have to say it one time which is not awesome right? totally true. <laughs> <laughs> we love to say that though parents yeah, love to say that when they get mad really i do. told you one time okay oh come on now as a wife we set a boundary we may not yell at our husbands, but we do act funny. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We you just put, get real put quiet. An extra coat, put, put an extra space between. Right. Them. Put a big old pillow in yeah, between. Middle. Don't touch me, but don't say don't touch me. Mm -hmm. Just put a pillow there so that uh -huh. says don't touch me. Make your own plate at dinner. Make your own plate. <laughs> dinner ready. Oh, you're going to bring me a plate? Not, dinner not even, ready. Not even dinner ready. Just sit down, mm -hmm. eat your dinner. Maybe a text. Food ready. <laughs> I did that before. <laughs> Fool ready. And then like, or not like like uh, Shaq said, don't say nothing. And then someone's like, oh, I smell cooking. Oh, no, 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 no. Back up. Or <laughs> they'd be like, oh, you finished cooking. And I'd be like, you didn't smell the food. <laughs> the house is not that big. It is not. I know you smelled this cooking. You should have came on down the steps. Mm -hmm. or, or one of my personal favorites, just leave all the clothes on your side of the bed. Or only do your personal laundry and not their laundry. Yes. Girl, we, we done got a whole list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but some other boundaries, some other ways, some other signs that we can add to that list mm -hmm. are, Chris, Chris mentioned it, feeling resentment. Or this is another one, feeling overwhelmed. Mm. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed. We don't even know why we don't overwhelmed. don't even know why. But it's because our boundaries constantly are being crossed. Or there's no boundary there where they should be. No boundary one. anyway. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we're hiding from people that you think might need or want something from you. I've done that before. Mm, my brother does that. <laughs> <laughs> he will not answer his phone. Like, if, if someone in particular might call me, no, nah, I don't do this all the time with everybody. You know, but so I already know they're probably going to ask me for some money. Mm. So I'm not answering this dag on phone. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't, or, or if someone, um, uh, comes to your office <laughs> it's like oh can you can we go and have a quick meeting mm. and then you just like oh you try to make up something to do even though it's not you don't do nothing but you make it up because you feel bad for saying no mm -hmm. and that's a whole nother thing when you start feeling bad for saying no oh or well, you ain't gotta lie exactly well you have to lie to get out of it yeah like, instead of just being honest like you know what? i really don't feel like doing that yes but you know i feel like in this society or culture that we came up with if we say no to something, we have to have an excuse. Yeah, yeah. But that's not total facts. Yeah, you shouldn't have to have an excuse to say no. I know. I I keep hearing people say this all the time. No is a whole sentence. It all is all by itself. It all by no itself. No explanation. It's just no. Mm. Um, feeling burned out. Feeling burned out. Right. Um, another sign is that you're managing other people's emotions. Oh. Like you're so worried about how that person might feel or Listen, think if or you feel like whatever. That, raise your hand. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise your listening ear of a hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just say it's me. Like, oh, I can't say no or I can't do that because I know so and so will feel bad or I know so and so expects me to do this or I know so and so. You know, and you're sitting there managing what you think. They might feel if you don't do what they ask you to do yes. instead of letting them put on their big boy, big girl, big whoever you are draws yeah. and managing yes. their own emotions. It's yes. not your job to manage somebody else's anticipated emotions to yeah. what you might say that will 
have you taken care of yourself? Yeah. That taking care of yourself is like the biggest component of that for right. all of us parents who, who might have experienced some trauma. I'm talking to you out of my own experience. This may not be your experience, but if we sit back and we do some self-reflection, we can ask, why don't we do certain things with our kids? And a lot of times it's because out of our own trauma that we're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. But we don't realize that you can do that, but within a limit. Right. You don't have to like just let them have free fall. And then when you need space and time for yourself, which is something we said, mm-hmm. that's when you know you need a boundary. You don't have it because you haven't set limits. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another thing, I think I mentioned this a little bit. It's kind of connected to trying to manage everybody's emotions. But you're trying to please everybody in the room, yeah. Yeah. in the house, in the office, at the job. That's a lot of work. At the church, wherever. You're trying to please everybody. Mm-hmm. And first of all, that's impossible. Yes. There's always going to be that one mm-hmm. that's not going to be happy. Yes. And <laughs> you, know. Let you know. And they'll let you know. And then in your, in your quest to try to make everybody happy, to make nobody be sad, to make everybody, you know, sing kumbaya in a circle together around the, 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 the fire. The fire. Mm-hmm. Guess what's burning up in that fire? What's that? Your mental stability. Yes. <laughs> your sanity. Your emotional capacity. <laughs> your happiness. Yes. They're they're singing around a fire, burning everything that makes you gives you joy. Yes. <laughs> and then they sing an yes. about it. They don't, and like, you're miserable. Oh yeah. You're like in the fire. Miserable. Yeah. You know, and, and then probably growing more angry every day. More angry because more you're resentful. like, why don't you notice that I need? Why you don't, don't you see take me care over here me? in the fire. Yeah. I'm in the fire. Yes. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. Help me. Ooh, that just gave me a thought. <laughs> that just gave me a thought. That what? just made me think about why don't we notice when our strong friends need us? That just gave that that image of all of us being okay, but the strong friend being in the fire, mm. and we're like, oh, that's the strong friend. Right. Like, really? Really? We're missing it. That's for a whole nother time. That's a whole nother episode, John. But it just made me think about that. Yeah. So, why do people break your boundaries? Why do they do it? Well, I know from my own personal experience, it's not setting clear boundaries. Mm. A lot of things, I'm very nonchalant and laid back in the things that I do and how I parent. Um, Maybe even how I wife. And some things are just that are important to my husband really aren't important to me. Like, my daughter wearing my my shoes. Mm -hmm. That don't really bother me. Like, as long as she take care of it, I'm okay. I don't really need her to come and say, hey, mom, can I wear? Because she has worn my things before. She didn't ruin them. So I just let her come in. She, and it's only my kicks, right? She's not wearing my heels or nothing like that. She ain't wearing your Louis Vuitton. She, she ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my husband's like, you need to ask. You need to And I'm like, I really don't care, though. Like, it's just shoes. I'll get another pair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys can't see me looking at her like, no, I agree with your husband. Ask yes. me. <laughs> Let's but, that, that was, but as a kid, that was something I always wanted to do. I wanted to be able to wear my mother's clothes. My mother's very fashionable. Mm. And so in school, where all the girls were wearing all these name brand things, I, my mom wasn't buying me name brand things. Mm. So I wanted to sneak in her closet and wear some of her things. And she, I knew she was going to say no. So I didn't want to ask. So I would be scared and I would go and sneak and wear some of her clothes sometimes. And I just didn't want my daughter to have to do that. So I just was like, yeah, you can wear my shoes. But fast forwarding to today, mm. I have told her since that you need to ask before. Right. And she does every time now. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You know, we were talking about that. That kind of brought up a flashback for me. I know when uh, I have two sisters mm-hmm. and one brother. And, you know, as being in a house with two other sisters and, you know, they tend to want to, quote unquote, borrow yeah. your things. Yeah. So my youngest sister, I will, I will leave her unnamed. Yes. <laughs> um, thought it not robbery <laughs> to borrow my brand new white uh, sneakers, walking, walk, whatever uh-huh. loaf, white shoes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> she borrowed my brand new white shoes. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. <sighs> Give me a minute. Hold up. <laughs> Because all the emotions are coming yeah, back to me. Re- breathe through it. Breathe so, through it. <laughs> and she didn't ask me, by the way. Mm-hmm. And if she did, I don't remember. I don't think she did. Because 
I wouldn't have been as surprised when she came back with the shoes. So anyway, mm-hmm. later on that evening, I'm going into my room and I see some shoes strewn on the floor, not the way I had left them, but mm-hmm. in another way that was like, I don't care. This ain't so my like stuff. The three, the three bears. You know, who somebody's been eating my porridge, somebody's laying in my bed. And right, but I already bed. knew who it was oh, because okay. my other sister cannot fit my shoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that gave it away a little bit. Uh-huh. But at any rate, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, whose shoes are these? I'm looking at, tell me why shoes that were once white were no longer. Oh. This chick looked like she'd been kicking rocks Ooh. up the road in my freaking shoes. Wow. <laughs> and when I had approached her mm-hmm. regarding my shoes, uh-huh. I went to her with all the loving said, kindness you can muster. With all the loving kindness I could not muster. <laughs> I was like, girl. Instead of, not, like I said, I'm not trying to put her out there. I'm not going to say her name, although she knows who she is. Girl. <laughs> but I said her name. What happened to my shoes? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I wore them. And, um, yeah, they got a little messed up, but, you know. And I'm like, so what are you gonna do? Not gonna clean? She, she was, she was like, no, you can buy some more, right? Now this is, I don't know if this is a child of, uh, of, uh, uh, episode because I, 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 what I, what yeah, I would I should say. See my face right now. Those words that I'm sure you could fill in the blank. Mm. What, did, I didn't. I don't know what I said. Mm-hmm. I knew I wasn't happy, yeah. <laughs> but that was a traumatizing experience for me. Sure so now I was like, every time, please don't touch my stuff. Ask me before you touch my stuff. And although my other sister still be sneaking off of my earrings, which she still got a couple pair, and if you're listening, <laughs> I want my earrings back. <laughs> but I, I don't want to digress too much <laughs> from why do people break your boundaries. Yes. Let's bring it on back. Why do people break your boundaries? So as uh, Shaq said, too much flexibility. Mm-hmm. Like there's not a distinct non like a very clear boundary right. so it might be you your boundary might be oh um i don't know what's an example of a loose boundary a loose boundary might be oh, oh shoot i think like my shoes huh? that's a loose boundary huh? in the beginning i was like yeah you can wear them that's not a boundary that's not oh that's no boundary, a loose boundary <laughs> that's an example of no um, boundary um well yeah you can use some of my stuff yeah. That's like a loose boundary. Yeah. But it doesn't say you can you you need to ask me to borrow my right. things every time you do it. Right. It's just like, yeah, you can wear my stuff if I say so. Or not even that. You can wear some of my stuff sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. That means who decides if it's this time or that time. Exactly. It's very unclear. Yes. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So um all right. Or like me believing saying it once and people should automatically get it and understand. Right. If I say it one time, then that is it. But exactly. I know. I think we all know. We we tend to put this towards kids, but I feel like it has to. It, it go with adults too. Mm. Like you just have to keep telling people over and over and over and over again sometimes before they actually get it. And sometimes you're gonna have to put a consequence on that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, most of the times, if you want it to be successful, you're gonna have to put a consequence, consequence. on that. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you speeding down the road and you never get a ticket when the cops pull you over. Yeah. Why would you stop speeding down exactly. the road? Exactly. But let you get one ticket, one good ticket, one, one good, good time. And get them points on your license. What? And yes. have to take off work to go to court. Yep. Or get a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And man, I bet it's you best believe you're going to be driving the speed limit for the rest of your yes, life. Yes, you are. Or at least until you forget. Yes, you are. <laughs> because that yes, you are. changes things. Um, Another oh, yes. reason why people break boundaries. Go ahead. Is not holding people accountable. Right. Not holding people accountable. Not making your boundaries clear on what you need. And going back to believing how we should say it once and people should get it. Let me just give a little example here. So I was reading, I don't know what I was reading, what I was listening to. You know, before we do these podcasts for you guys, we're reading different books. We're listening to different other people's podcasts, mm-hmm. other YouTube channel uh, yeah. people's and, and things that we're they have went through. Diligence. We're trying yes. to do our, our, our due diligence to the to the doest of the diligence. Yes. <laughs> no, no, that's even <laughs> whatever. So it was a scenario where, you know, we, when parents have adult children, they move out, they get their own houses, their own apartments, whatever. 
So in this scenario, the daughter um, gave her parents the key to her place mm -hmm. because, you know, for emergencies or if they need to come by or whatever the case was. Um, and they took that to mean that anytime they want to come over, they would just show up. Mm -hmm. Walk on on the house, mm -hmm. you know, and go about their business, and she be might be there half naked on the couch, mm -hmm. <laughs> or she might be there with a significant other, and they would just be walking on in. So yeah. she had a conversation with her parents. She's like, you know what, mom and dad, you know, I love you guys. You know, I I, I definitely wanted you guys to have a key because you know, just in case you needed to come in, but I really would appreciate it. If you would give me a heads up first, like give me a call or text first, let me know that you're coming. Right. You know. So they, they, you know, of course, the parents say yes, they're up and down. Oh yeah, sure, you know, we'll do that. But then they continue to walk in the house at all times. Now, granted, they probably had some good reasons. Oh, I was dropping off some food, or I was mm -hmm. dropping off this thing I bought for you, or whatever the case was. Mm -hmm. But they were still not abiding to her boundary right. so she then had to have another conversation with her parents like you know what mom and dad you know i asked you to do this but you guys are keep doing it but so if you continue to do it i'm gonna have to change the locks on the door and i really don't want to do that right you know so she's coming to them and that's you know that's another tip you guys when you're making these boundaries especially with people that you love you got to come with it with kindness you oh, know yeah. and be honest of how yeah. you're feeling and use a lot of i statements Absolutely. so it's not like oh you're doing some wrong and you're making me feel this right. way you know it, it you know come with them you know because usually when you come that way people are not going to be offended because you know you're coming right. with kindness you right. know so she said that and they you know even with that they continue to walk into the house on and on and on and on and on and on and on so so then she eventually she had to lay down the consequence boom she changed all the locks in the house. Changed all the locks. And she didn't tell. She didn't tell them, like, oh, yeah, I changed the locks. She didn't tell them at all. Mm -mm. One day, <laughs> like usual, <laughs> dad or mom tried to come in the house, and their key didn't work. Mm -hmm. So they reached out to her. It's like, yeah, we tried to get in, but something's wrong with the key. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> wrong the with the lock. Something's wrong with the key. key. <laughs> <laughs> but to tell you, but after that point, they never, she never had that problem again. Never. They always called or text or whatever. And eventually, I'm sure she did give them a copy of the new key. But they never had that problem again because that consequence was necessary right. for them to learn something. You know? Yeah. That, I love that story. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we need to definitely set some consequences forward because I think people, they love you. So they, they're like, oh, you mean well. Like, especially as parents, I'm sorry. It's like somehow we feel like it. Uh, we have the right to because I'm your parent. Right. I done raised you. I done bought everything that you ever had. Yes. <laughs> you owe me for this. <laughs> and I'm still helping you. So, <laughs> listen, if I want to, don't make a big stink about it. But I think we, ha we have to put those consequences on because it makes people recognize like hey as an adult like i'm an adult right right I, I have my own boundaries i have my own home i have my own rules the way i like for things to be done and so since you're not doing that then bam here's the consequence as parents it's like as the parent of smaller children or younger children it's like you got to set those boundaries because um if not then you have a hard time getting them out of your room Mm. <laughs> you have a hard time like okay they call you five to five thousand times during the day Sex. and it's like okay well you know you got my mom used to do that she's like do not call me at work mm. she would not give us her job number oh until like three or four months into her job then we were allowed and only if it was an emergency mm. and if we call outside of that believe me it Word. was not a pretty sight i believe it so some types of boundaries and they're a couple physical boundaries. That means how you want people to be in your space, mm -hmm. personal oh, space, so far away. Yeah. Right. Sexual boundaries. Some mm -hmm. things you want to do. Some things you don't want to do. Right. Emotional boundaries. Like don't try to uh, manipulate me. Uh, time boundaries. You know. <laughs> That time when I got a husband I'm like, hey, Shakur, it's five more minutes. Hey, Shakur, two more minutes. Oh, it drives me crazy. Not only because you're the late one. Not only because I'm the late one. <laughs> if she was on time, it wouldn't drive me crazy. <laughs> Could you stop tell, giving me the top the countdown? Terrible. <laughs> or send the kids. Tell your mom she got five minutes. Yes, girl. <laughs> mommy, daddy said, that's what they do. Mommy, daddy said. Of course, you. like, you ain't giving me in trouble. I ain't putting me in this. You ain't giving me mad at me. Yes. And then material and financial boundaries. 
Okay. So this, we're going to talk about how to set personal boundaries. And um, I got some of this information. I'm going to try to give some people shout outs. Uh, Lavender, she's on uh, YouTube. Um, good stuff. So self-awareness, you know, know your preferences, know your desires, your needs, your need to, you need to know yourself and where your boundaries even are, what they even are, mm -hmm. before you can even tell somebody else what they are. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do not decide what your boundaries are, yeah, other people are going to decide for you. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to have a running theme with this podcast is that you have to do a lot of self-assessment. Exactly. You have to really sit down with yourself and really figure out who you are, what you like, what you don't like. And those boundaries are going to come out of who you are. What do you really care about? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have to take some time with yourself. I agree. And then once you decide what your boundaries are, communicate and express those boundaries, communicate those needs honestly and kindly. Those are the key words. Yeah. Now, there's two different kinds of telling somebody your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You can tell them in a nasty way mm -hmm. where they're not going to receive it. <laughs> and wait, if, if you're at that point where you're telling it in a nasty way, then it's because you haven't realized... That this is a boundary that either you did not set, something you didn't think you would care about, you're overtaxing yourself, you're giving too much of yourself, you don't have time for yourself. Right. And so we want to lash out at the person in anger and frustration, but we have not made what we need clear. Mm -hmm. So I just want to add on the end of that, make sure you apologize right. after you do that, because nine times out of ten, you didn't make that need clear. Right, right. Or if they did mess up continuously after you made it clear, you didn't give a consequence. Facts. Yeah. So, um, and then after you express those needs or express those boundaries and the person you're dealing with expresses their needs and boundaries, it might be good for you guys to compromise on something. Yes. And sometimes that works. Mm -hmm. You know, both I, of you guys leave happy. Yeah. But I think that's good for all relationships. Right. Right. But other times you can't get to that point. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, you just need to get to the point where you can respect each other's decision. Exactly. And keep moving. Right. You're not always going to be able to agree, and that's okay. That's okay. But respect me enough to just do what I'm asking you to do. This is my limit. Please don't cross it. Right. While you're in my presence. Because, you know, one of my limits, especially uh, with um, at work, I don't like people cursing around me, especially younger people. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mostly just younger people, because mm -hmm. I work at a school uh, for part of the time, so I don't let my kids curse around me. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean I tell them you can't curse anywhere? No. I, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, you're at home, you you in the streets, mm -hmm. you, do, what, you yeah. do what you do. Yeah. But if you want to be in my presence, mm -hmm. this is my expectation. This is my boundary for you. Yeah. And that's pretty much what the boundary is. It's not like you're telling this person how to live their life outside of their connection with you. Exactly. You're just adding to, if you want to be in my this space. This is my limit. If you want to be in my space, this is my expectations for yeah. people who want to be in my space. Yeah, that's good. Um, and once you tell them this, you're not responsible for that people's feelings. Can you say that again? When you tell them your boundary or your needs, yes. you are not responsible for other people's feelings. You are not it is not your responsibility to manage somebody else's feelings. It's not. Because of your need to set a boundary or your need to set limits. Right. Because if you do take responsibility for someone else's feelings, you're kind of acting like they can't handle their own emotions. Like yeah. they're not man or woman or whatever enough facts to, to handle it. And you shouldn't take that away from them. And if you're in a relationship with a person who can't handle that, I might advise you to rethink your relationship because that sounds uh, like a very uh, codependent type of relationship to me. And that's a whole other thing. We have to that do a is. series of codependency because people yeah. think, oh, you know, it's like the needy person. Yeah. They always think about the needy person when it comes to codependency, yeah. but they don't think about the person who's solving the problems who needs to be the hero. Oh, yeah. That's the oh, other yeah. side of codependency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the other side. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but they don't get as much uh, slack back. At any rate, um, don't hold back expressing yourself um, when you're communicating your uh, boundaries. And like we, to reiterate, how they respond is their responsibility. Yes. All right. Stop trying to keep the peace between everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Stop trying to manipulate the situation to make everything okay. You hear all that, the moms? Time. All my moms out there. <laughs> it is impossible. Oh, it only gives us still recording. It probably just has it limited. Okay. Um, it is impossible to always have harmony. Yeah. Impossible. And you shouldn't strive for it. Because guess what? Who gets affected by doing that? Who? The person trying to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. But not only that, it sets unrealistic expectations exactly. for other people. Nobody else in the world is going to do that with another person. No. So then you have people who are latched on to you because you're the only person who's going to allow them to do that. To right. You. And they latch on to you and they're like leeches. Yes. They, they suck not the life. Let go. They suck all the life. <laughs> and they expect everybody who is in their presence to be just like oh, your. Yeah unrealistic self oh and you know what a good way to tell is when you when you're all together uh -huh. and you see how they treat other people mm. if they're different with other people than they are with you then you should be questioning well why don't they do that for me why don't they let me have the same limits why don't why don't they talk to them like how they talk to me why don't they give me the same grace that they give these other people hello yes how come I'm, come i'm always on the hook yeah and so and so's not always on the hook yeah that's a problem. Yeah. That's because your lack of boundaries. That's what it is. All right. Okay, so when you do have to say no, which you will have to say no mm -hmm. sometimes when people request, say no with grace and gratitude to what doesn't serve you. Yes. Listen, we're not saying this is not being selfish, but you have to protect your mind, your heart, and your spirit. You have to protect it all because if you don't, nobody's going to do that for you. Nope. You, nobody can love you like how you can love you. Nope. So you got to protect those parts of yourself. Right. You got to. And then lastly, practice self-love. Yeah. And what is self-love? Self-love and self-care are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, you know, go get your massage, go get your nails done, go get, you know, which is all good things. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's self-care. Yes. Self-love is a little bit different. Self-love happens within you. It happens yeah. in your mind and yeah. how you think about yourself. How do you talk to yourself yeah. in your mind? How yeah. you criticize or or or, or whatever yourself. Like yeah. if you're beating yourself on in your, if you're beating yourself up in your mind all the time, you're being that consistent toxic voice in your yeah. head all yeah. the time. Every yeah. time you make a mistake, every time you do something wrong, every time, and that's you. That's not self love. No. You're giving everybody else grace and grace mercy. And mercy mm -hmm. But when it comes to you, you're like the villain yeah. in every scenario. Everyone. I always use this example when I talk about, you know, self-love. I say, you know, that person, you know, think about that person in your life who is who always makes you frustrated, who's mm -hmm. so annoying, who's nagging all the time, who's always negative, mm -hmm. that never has anything good today to say. Think about that person and imagine. What if that person lived in your head 24-7? Yeah. Listen, you'd be banging your head up against the wall. <laughs> yes. Yes, you would. Uh, and that's what you're doing to yourself. Right. You're not loving yourself well. So, something I wanted to... Um, I was listening to the Boundary Boss. Um, if anybody uh, knows who she is, um, it's Terry Cole. She writes a lot of good stuff. And this is something, I'm going to read off something that she had said in an interview uh, that she had. And she said, not sure if your boundaries are good, bad, loose, or strict? Ask yourself the question, where are you, where are you resentful? If you're the last on your list, if your inner voice is super negative and mean, then you are literally setting the bar for your life and will attract others who agree with that low assessment. And when you feel good about yourself, live self-love mm -hmm. you're setting the bar higher and will attract folks who believe that is how worthy you are Ooh. so i love that statement sermon right there i know right <laughs> wave your that hands preach. stand up <laughs> give your neighbor two high fives I feel, I feel we need to have a girl like i love that yes um, 
I think we need to take that quote and put it up when we get our office. We need to like have that in our yeah, office. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, that's um, a great quote. And I thought that was a good quote to live by. Yeah. And, and it's a great place to end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great place to end. So thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Let Me Tell You as we discuss boundaries. Thank you for listening to another episode of Let Me Tell You with Shot and Chris. We will bring you another episode next Wednesday at 7 p.m. To get notifications and to listen to past episodes, please follow and like us on Instagram at lmtu.sc, on Facebook and YouTube at Let Me Tell You. And of course, if you're listening to us on Podbean, make sure to follow us. Lastly, let me tell you to live a healthy and full life.